Amen. Amen. So let's just lift up our praises to God. The song says, my praise is calling you. So if you haven't lifted up praise to God, then nothing is calling on the Lord. So tonight, let's lift up our voices and just praise the Lord. Amen. You haven't praised God by saying praise the Lord. Amen. You praise him by actually using the words of praise, like thanksgiving, like acknowledgement. So beloved, unmute your phone and let's just give thanks to the Lord. For indeed, he is good and his mercies endure forever. Father Lord, we say thank you. We are thank so grateful to be here and to be called your children. We thank you once again for an opportunity to just fellowship together you, as your thank beloved. You, Lord. But we don't neglect you, coming together. So tonight we have hearkened to that instruction and we are here um, fellowshipping one to another, Lord. We have come to sit under the feet of Jesus and to receive from the ministration of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we say thank you for that which you have in store for us. Holy Spirit, we invite you and we say come and teach us tonight. We just say thank you, Lord, for the, for the ability to hear, to listen, to understand. We thank you for wisdom which is readily available to us daily. We receive it tonight by faith and we decree and we declare that we are not leaving this place this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Welcome amen. once again, family. Um, so I'd like for us to just grab our communing elements. Amen. Let's grab our communing elements. And I'd like um, Sister Desiree to enable screen share so I can share my screen as well. So let's just grab our communing elements. Tonight, I'll be reading to us from the book of um, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 9 to 21. Hebrews 10 verse 9 to 21, amen. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, while I wait for her to enable screen share, I'll just go ahead and read for us. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9 to 21. The Bible says, so friends, we can now, without hesitation, walk right up to God into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. Amen. The curtain into God's presence is his body. Okay. Let's take a look at this picture. This is what we're going to use to partake of the Lord's Supper. Thank you, sister. The Bible says two things in this uh, portion of scripture. It says, so friends, after talking about the covenant and everything, the blood and all of that, um, the writer now says, so friends, meaning you and I, we can now, meaning at this moment, without hesitation, walk right up to God into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. Amen. The curtain into God's presence is his body. So as we hold the bread in our hands, we are reminded from the Hebrew writer that the curtain into God's presence is the body of Jesus Christ, meaning that when this body is broken, it grants us access to the presence of uh, Jesus or to the presence of God. So it was imperative that Jesus Christ died, that his body be broken on that cross. Amen. So tonight we just want to celebrate access into the presence of God through the body of Jesus Christ. You and I know what the curtain looks like. When you open up that curtain, it grants you access to see the other side of where you are. If there is sunlight on the other side, then when that curtain is open, it grants you access to receive of the reflection of the sun, sun rays and all of that. Father, we just wanna say thank you tonight for the body of Jesus Christ. We are told that it is a curtain into the presence of Jesus. Into, the, into your presence. So tonight we acknowledge the breaking of the body of Jesus Christ on that cross for this same purpose, that when Jesus Christ hung on that cross and declared it was finished, we are told that the, the curtain, the veil in the temple tore from top to bottom. From, from top to bottom. We see how the curtain split and granted us 
granted us access into the most holy place. So tonight we acknowledge the body of Jesus Christ and we acknowledge the reason why it had to be broken. So tonight in agreement to that, we break this body together and we partake of it, declaring that we are gaining access into the most holy place in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's partake together. Amen. Now, the first part of this scripture says, so friends, we can now without hesitation walk right up to God into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. Jesus Christ is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek, amen. And we are told that through the blood of Jesus, he cleared the way, meaning that if there were obstacles before us, the blood of Jesus has enabled or has ensured that those obstacles be cleared away so that you and I, on our journey to gaining access into the holy place, there'll be no obstacles, amen. So we shouldn't hesitate, amen. How you feel should not be a hindrance, should not cause you to hesitate getting into the or gaining access into the presence of God. What you just did before coming to the line should not be a hindrance to you gaining access into the presence of God. Amen. What you thought, the negative thoughts you had in mind prior to joining the line should not be a hindrance. Amen. Because the blood of Jesus has taken care of that. Amen. It says we, should, we can now come into that presence without hesitation because the blood has cleared the way. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for the blood of Jesus. We cannot begin to outline the benefits that we receive because of the blood of Jesus. But tonight, we just want to highlight the fact that because of the blood of Jesus, every obstacle has been taken away. Obstacles caused by others or even caused by us, we declare and we believe that the blood of Jesus has taken care of that. In, on our behalf. So we receive this blood of Jesus in agreement to what your word has to say concerning it. And we declare that it is our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's partake together. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you for tonight once again. Even as I pray these three scriptures over us. I'm going to pray to us, uh, pray for us tonight, even as we begin. We are still talking about um, the mystery of understanding. And while I prepared, I just, these three scriptures stood out and the Lord specifically instructed me to pray this over us. Let's never get tired of praying for wisdom and understanding. We need it desperately. Amen. So I pray for us using Ephesians 1 17, Philippians 1 9, and Colossians 1 verse 9. The Bible says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Amen. So I pray in the name of Jesus, just like Paul prayed for the Ephesians, that may the Lord continue to give us the spirit, give you and I the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know him better, amen. If we know him some right now, there is room to grow and know him better. And it's not possible to know him better without the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So I declare that that is our portion in the name of Jesus. Philippians 1.9 says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. So I decree and I declare that you keep on, we will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. May we never despise knowledge. May we never despise wisdom. May we never despise understanding. For therein lies our salvation. Therein lies our future, our progress in the name of Jesus. Colossians 1.9, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. I declare and I declare that may the Lord give us complete, not partial, complete knowledge. May we endure to receive complete knowledge of his will and to give us spiritual wisdom and understanding in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 So, beloved, once again, welcome to tonight's meeting. We continue with part three of the mystery of understanding in the kingdom. Our base text, Luke 24, 44 to 45, the Bible says, then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And 45 says, and he opened their understanding that he might comprehend scriptures, amen. So we have come to receive understanding, even by understanding the mystery of understanding, amen. So beloved, um, the past two weeks, we began this series and we began by um, um, asking the question, why understanding? We looked at a few scriptures to back that aspect. And the second thing we looked at was understanding can be concealed. We took a look at many scriptures to back that specific point, amen. And the third major point we looked at was that understanding can be evaluated through our results. That saying that I understand is one thing and acting it out is another, but I cannot know what you know until I see what you do, amen. So too it is for me. When you look at me, you know what I know by seeing what I do, amen. Now, the fourth major point was um, we look at the benefits of understanding, benefits of understanding. Then the fifth major point was reasons for concealed understanding. That's how we rounded up last week, reasons for concealed understanding. So today we're going to look at the sixth major point and that'll be, that'll bring us to the end of this series and we will continue with um, demonstration lessons for the next two weeks. We're going to practice what we have learned and I'll explain to us later. Now, the six point, major points we're taking a look at today is ways to improve understanding. Now we know that there are benefits um, to understanding. How then do we improve understanding? Yes, you may already be demonstrating or um, demonstrating understanding or manifesting understanding, but how can we improve it? How can we improve it? There's always room for growth and we are passionate on this platform about growth and spiritual growth most especially because therein lies um, growth in every area. Amen. Now we're going to look at our, we're going to identify our teachers. Amen. Because your teacher plays a great role in your understanding. If you have a teacher who doesn't understand and tries to teach you a concept that they don't understand, I can guarantee you that you leave that session not understanding as well, because they've just poured into you what they know and what they know is nothing. Amen. So in, if you must improve on your understanding, then you want to be careful about who teaches you. You want to carefully handpick your teachers. Do not allow just anybody to pour into you. Amen. It could be the reason why you and I could be somewhere and not knowledgeable about certain things. Now, the first teacher I want us to identify from scripture, which we all need, is God the Father. Did we know that God is a teacher? That our Father is a teacher. He is one teacher that we never want to undermine or despise. Just do a Google search and look at scriptures that talk about God teaching, and you'll see so many of them will come up. So what I'm going to do here is basically just expose us to some of the scriptures. I wouldn't be doing a lot of explanations because the scriptures will just communicate the, the message directly. So our first teacher is God the Father. Now we see that in a few scriptures. Isaiah 53 verse 13, the Bible says, all your children will be taught by the Lord and great will be their peace, amen. This is a guarantee we are receiving from the word of God that all our children, be it physical, biological, or, or um, spiritual, will be taught by the Lord and great will be their peace, amen. What does this also tell us? It tells us that the Lord himself teaches because it says our children will be taught by the Lord. Psalm 27 verse 11 says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my foes. Amen. The psalmist knew that God, the father, is a teacher. So he was comfortable calling upon that teacher to teach him 
his ways. Amen. So too, we should be comfortable calling on the Father to teach us his ways because he is a teacher all by himself. Amen. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Amen. The Lord speaking says, I, he's taking ownership for the instructing. He's taking ownership for the teaching. Amen. Because he knows that as a father, he has the responsi responsibility to teach his children. So he says, I will guarantee it, instruct you. I will teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Amen. Now we're looking at God, the Father, being our teacher. Two more scriptures on this aspect so that when next we're in need of a teacher, we shouldn't be too quick to look for the physical teachers around us. Make use of God, the Father. Amen. He's willing to teach us if we just call upon him. John 6, 45, the Bible says, it is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by of God. They shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father. It means there was something that the Father was teaching them. And as he taught them, they heard him and they understood him. Amen. So in the book of John, it stated there very clearly that they shall all be taught of God. So tell us that God teaches. And when he teaches, you will learn something and you will understand him. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse nine. It says, now as to the love of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Amen. So it is very clear that God teaches but what amazes me about this particular portion of scripture is that, that God can teach you per topic. In this aspect, he's teaching, you, he's teaching them about love for one another. So meaning that if you have need for a specific subject matter, which you don't understand, you can go to him and say, Father, you have taught people how to love one another. So I need you to teach me X, Y, and Z, depending on your need. Maybe teach me about peace teach me about patience, just whatever you are in need of knowing in that season, you can comfortably identify God the Father as one of your teachers and be sure that he will not just teach you broadly, that he will teach you specifically according to your need, amen. Now, our second teacher is God the Son, Jesus Christ, the word of God, amen. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 1, verse nine, anyone who runs ahead, and does not continue in the teaching of Christ, does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. The phrase of interest here is teaching, the teaching of Christ, meaning that Christ has a teaching which he's willing to teach people, amen. But the question to you and I is, have we submitted ourselves to the teaching of Christ? What can you and I show that this is what Christ has taught me? There is something known as the teaching of Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is a teacher. We saw him teaching throughout his walk on the earth as he, as he, as he moved along with his disciples. Evidenced by Matthew 11 verse 1, the Bible says, after Jesus had finished instructing his disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee to let us know that teaching is not the same as preaching, but the goal is the same, amen? Teaching and preaching are different. You can do both, Christ did both, but when it comes to teaching, let's teach. When it comes to preaching, let's preach. And like I said, the goal is the same, amen? To help the body of Christ to come to the full knowledge of, of, of God, amen? Luke 20 verse one. The Bible says one day as Jesus was teaching the people, not preaching to the people, teaching the people and preaching the good news in the temple, the leading priests, the teachers of religious law and the elders came up to him. Amen. Beloved, here are some, some of the scriptures 
um, that tell us that Jesus Christ is a teacher as well. God the Father is a teacher. Jesus Christ is a teacher. We are identifying our teachers, amen. The third person on that list of teaching is the Holy Spirit himself, amen. The Holy Spirit, what will we do without the Holy Spirit? What will we do in this dispensation without the Holy Spirit? John 14, verse 16, the Bible says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you, amen. We are identifying our teachers. We said, God the Father, we looked at a few scriptures. God the Son, we looked at a few scriptures. Now we're looking at God the Holy Spirit. These are all teachers that before you look for a physical teacher here on earth to teach you, you want to consult them because part of their teaching is directing you on whom to listen to at a given time in a given season of your life. Amen. There are specific subject matters that they will lead you to those specific people to listen to because he has trained those people in that area. And when you listen to the, to, to the people whom they have directed you to, you will benefit. That is part of the teaching process of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I really call upon us. Um, there is no room for ignorance, beloved. Let's not give excuses why we don't know. We can never, we should not always be in a place where we don't know anything. Let's make efforts to know something about the kingdom. Let's make an effort to know about specific subject matters to the end whereby somebody can call you and say, please, I need help understanding this subject matter. Maybe the covenant or the blood of Jesus. What do you know about it? Are you in position even now to teach somebody about the blood of Jesus? We break bread every day. Are you in position to teach anybody about the body of Jesus? We, we teach every day. Can you teach somebody about the benefits of teaching? Amen. What is it that you know that the God the Father has taught you, God the Son has taught you, and God the Holy Spirit has taught you? Let's desire to learn, let's desire to go. Let's submit ourselves under the tutelage of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit first before looking for physical teachers here on earth, amen. Now we continue to identify our teachers. Now, one other source or the fourth person on this line which you can sort after are teachers of the word. Some people have been gifted with the gift of teaching. Not everybody who teaches has a gift of teaching that we can all teach as disciples, amen. And we will see that. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 says this from the NIV version. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. Do we see that? So this is the reason why he gave the fivefold ministries to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So the role of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher is to make sure that the body of Christ is built up, not beaten up, amen? To be built up, not beaten up. The stage is a privilege to build up people, not beat them up, amen? I have to really emphasize on that. Then verse 13 says, until we, are, we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. The goal is such that we may be built up and become mature. Amen. When you sit under a physical teacher or apostle or prophet or evangelist or pastor, the end goal of that time invested is so that you, you and I can become mature. It is a disfavor to anyone when you sit under a person and they just don't want you to grow for many reasons best known to them. And one of which could be, I don't want them to know what I know. Whose information is it? Is it our information or is it God's information? We are just vessels through whom the Lord wants us to equip other people. And as we equip them, they will, they will rise up to where we are and together we can do more, amen. 
So we're talking about, we're identifying our teachers, teachers of the word, people whom God has handpicked and appointed to teach the word can help us on this journey to build us up so that we become mature. Beloved, do not, sitting under a teacher should not just be an endless effort, amen. There should come a time when you can say, I have graduated from where I used to be and I'm now at a different level. We never stop learning, but we should never remain at the same level. Amen. Evaluate your growth. If you sit under somebody for one year and you haven't changed, ask yourself a question. Does the teacher have a problem or am I just not receptive to the teaching? One person should be wrong or both. Amen. So evaluate your growth. Let's evaluate our growth. Let's be autonomous about our growth. Amen. Now, talking about teachers of the word, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11, and God chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of, his, of this good news. Paul, writing to Timothy, said this, meaning that to be a teacher of the word or to be a preacher or an apostle, you need to, be, have, you need to have been chosen by God. Amen. Teaching is one thing, but to be called in the office of a teacher is another altogether. But the benefit, to, to, the benefit to those two ends is that we all teach the word of God. Amen. Romans 12, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, we have different gifts. I believe you and I agree. My gifts may not be the same gifts that the Lord has given you. We all have different, different gifts. It says, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Amen. Teaching is a gift. Amen. Not everybody has the same grace to expound on scriptures the same. And this doesn't necessarily mean that they don't know. They just don't have that gift. However, there is grace sufficient enough for everyone to teach the word of God to the level whereby people around them can understand because that was the mandate given to us in, uh, in the book of Matthew 28. Look at this. Um, the fifth um, group of teachers will be disciples of Christ. You and I, those who can say, you know what, I do not necessarily uh, fall under the fivefold ministries or like Paul, I am not a teacher. I wasn't chosen to be a teacher of the good news in that regard as being called. Or you may say, oh, you know what? My gift is prophesying. It's not necessarily teaching. Or it is serving, not necessarily teaching. But there is something that has been made available to everyone. Amen. And we see that in Matthew 28, 16 to 20, as we see um, the fifth categories of, category of teachers. These are disciples of Christ, you and I. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. As I read, let's just pay attention to the highlighted words. The Bible says, then the 11 disciples, very specific, went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. So beloved, what is this telling us? After we have sought the, we've sat under the tutelage of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and those who have been chosen or called or set apart to be teachers of the word with the gift of teaching, we also have the benefit of the disciples, amen. Because the mandate to go and make disciples of all nations and also to teach them was given to every disciple. So we cannot exempt ourselves when it comes to teaching, amen. We shouldn't exempt ourselves and we cannot because Jesus Christ included us on this journey of teaching because he taught the disciples. So as he handed the baton, he told them to continue with what he had taught them. When he taught them, he wasn't necessarily teaching them in categories as in these are prophets and these are teachers. He taught them and he taught them with the mindset of them understanding that they too are teachers. They should learn enough to teach other people. 
So when you look and identify your teachers, do not exempt um, other disciples of Christ. Amen. By disciples, we mean those who are serious, those who are disciplined. Amen. Believers, not disciples. Very different group of people. But if you have chosen to discipline yourself according to the word of God, then I can guarantee that there is something about him that you know that you're able to bring to other people. Amen. Because that's a part of that's part of the journey of being disciplined by, by the Lord. Amen. Now we're still looking at other teachers. Amen. We began by looking at um, disciples of Christ. Now, other teachers also include parents. Did you know that we are also teachers? That the Lord has called us, for those of us who are parents, God has called us and given us the assignment to teach our children. Amen. If you're a biological parent or a spiritual parent, you have the responsibility to teach the children. It is our responsibility. God entrusted these children in our care so that we can build them up and then release them to the world. Amen. So we have that responsibility. Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 19, the Bible says, fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up, amen. Meaning that our lifestyles as a whole should be a classroom. We should be a walking classroom, a talking classroom before our children. That we wouldn't wait until our children, we drop our children off by the bus stop and they go to a classroom and then they are being taught. That even before that activity takes place, we have the responsibility to teach them that at any given time that your child looks at you, there is something they are learning. When, when you say something, they learn from what you say. When you act out something, they learn from your actions. Could we say that we are good teachers to our parents, to our, to our children, by our words and by our actions? If we were to go from house to house this evening and just interview the children in the different households represented on this line, would you say you've been the best example to your child or to your children? Yet the Lord entrusted you with this life, with this destiny. He trusted that you had everything that it takes to make the best out of this person. He entrusted that child to you. So you can bring out the best in them and release them into the world to go and help other people. Are we fulfilling our assignments? Or are you saying, oh, I got this child because I was raped, so I, I don't have time to bring up the child. No, no person comes to earth by accident. It doesn't matter how they get here. Amen. So however the child came, you have the responsibility to make sure that you impart in them the things that they need to know in order to take them to the next level. Because when, they're, when they fail in their work, it also gets into your own account that you did not do what you had to do when you had to do it. Let's always remember that life is in seasons. A time will come when they will grow and go. But the question is, what are they living with? We are identifying our teachers and other teachers. Now, fathers, I wanna to speak to fathers, I wanna to speak to mothers. I know I've spoken to parents at large, but I just want to break it down even more. Fathers, I call upon us to, or upon you, to be responsible teachers to your children. Amen. Genesis 18 verse 19, I read from the NIV. The Bible says, for I know him, God talking about Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Amen. God made a very um, bold statement, a very confident statement here. He says, for I know him, that he will command his children. Let's pause. For all the men on the line and those who will listen later, can God make this bold statement and this confident statement about you? Can he say, for I know 
put your name in the blank for I know this person that he will confidently command his children, not only his children and his household after him. Can God be so confident about you in that area? Or is he looking for every way to just escape, you know, avoid calling your name altogether because you've been an embarrassment to fatherhood? Let's examine our lives. It is better to be on the Lord's side, beloved. It doesn't matter the applause you get from people. It is safer to be on the Lord's side. If God does not approve of you, it's just a matter of time. The world will turn against you. Amen. He says, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. Proverbs 4, 3 to 4, the Bible says, for I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished my mother. Then he taught me and said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. The writer of Proverbs say something about his father. He says, for I too was, was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother, just like many of our children are, or grandchildren are, still tender, still tender and possibly cherished by the other parents. The Bible says, then he, meaning my father, taught me and he said to me, let's pause as a father on this line and as a father listening, what have you taught your child to a place where when they grow up, they can now reflect like Solomon and say, you know what? When I was a child, my father taught me this. And this is a lesson that has never left me. Because our children will remember the good things that we do for them. God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we will reap. Amen. If you sow the word of God into your children, be confident that God is going to multiply that seed. That even as adults, they'll, they'll be able to look back and appreciate not just what they have received, but from whom they have received. Amen. So do not abandon the spiritual growth of your children to other people, fathers. That's, all, that's where we are heading in, as when it comes to this particular point. If God entrusts a child to come through you, entrusts this seed to come through you, then he has also entrusted the spiritual well-being and welfare of that child into your care. And we will be doing that destiny a disfavor if we never invest in that life. Or if we abandon their, abandon their growth spiritually, most especially to other people. Fathers, it's a wake up call for us tonight. He says, then he taught me, as an adult, he comes back and writes and says, he taught me, my father taught me. What, even as uh, the women on the line and the men on the line, what has your father taught you? Can you say that your father taught you anything spiritual, most specifically? Then he taught me and he said to me, that's the reason why we need to be correcting the mistakes and not just be held captive by the mistakes of our parents, but to right the wrongs as we move forward with the next generation. Tell yourself it ends with that generation. It doesn't even continue with me and it wouldn't cross over to the next generation. You can choose to stand as a wall and refuse some of those arrows from crossing over. God can help you because he has girded us with strength for battle, amen. Then he taught me and said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. To be a father, let's say this, to be a father is not just when you bring a spirit, a seed to the earth, a child, amen. It's more than that. After the child has come, there are other responsibilities that still fall under the cap or the heart of fatherhood. When we say God is my father, we can now say, this father teaches me. Now you are a father to X, Y, and Z. What have you taught them? Amen. Let's look at mothers. Proverbs 31 verse 1, the Bible says, the saints of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. Amen. 
You know, quite often we read about the Proverbs 31 woman and every woman wants to be like that Proverbs 31 woman or they think she's just too much. And every man who wants to get married wants a Proverbs 31 woman. But did you know that Proverbs 31 was written by a man? This is how much a man knew about a woman. Why? Because a woman, a mother, sat her young boy, young son down and said, my son, I'm going to teach you something. Even in the area of women, I'm going to teach you. So that when you, in the future, when you grow up and you're looking for a wife, you have a script, something to go by, something like a guide to guide you on this journey as you look for a wife. Proverbs 31 is written about women, but it was a mother's script to her son. A mother's script to her son. What have fathers written and handed to their daughters? We so desire to be the Proverbs 31 wife, but this was a man receiving a lesson for the woman. As a woman, have you received the lessons for the man? The sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. The mother was not random about her teachings to him. She was very specific. Talking about the woman was just one aspect because prior to that, she talked to him about not getting drunk. Perhaps she knew that this man was going to be a king. So she said, it's not, it's not for kings to get drunk, um, um, King Lemuel, it's not for kings to get drunk and to go after women and to not seek justice. So she encouraged him on the aspect of drunkenness, on the aspect of you know, justice and the aspect of women because women will bring kings down quickly. So she encouraged him in the area of his calling. This is an encouragement to parents, fathers and mothers more specifically. We have some work to do, amen. Now we've identified our teachers. We've said that our teachers include God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It also includes parents, fathers, mothers, disciples as at large, and also teachers of the word. Amen. That was the first point. Now the second major point is um, another way or ways to improve understanding will be to identify the significance of the role of teaching identify the significance, the importance of the role of teaching. If you, if you and I never sit down to evaluate, why teaching? Why should I, um, is teaching really important? How will teaching contribute to my understanding? If we never answer that question, we will never get to a place where we can endure hours of teachings. Or when we hear that, this person is delivering a word. We are so eager to go and listen because we have not yet come to a place where we really appreciate the benefits of the role of teaching. Amen. Once we get to that place where we do identify the importance of the role of teaching and how it contributes to improving our understanding, we will not hesitate when a teaching is going on. We will not even consider it boring because there is something we are looking for. There is something we need to know that we do not have. And until we, we listen to X, Y, and Z person, we will not get that information. And most especially if the Lord is directing you to a specific person to learn from them for a season. It is humility to do so, amen. We'll have to lay aside our ego and just do it because God may be equipping you and he just found that vessel fit enough to equip you for that season. So it will not be a lifetime thing. So just endure that season, learn, and then move forward. Amen. Now, Acts 2, 40 to 42 from the NIV tells us something. I'm going to read this for us. The Bible says, with many other words, he warned them, talking about Peter, speaking to um, a, a group of people who were looking at them after they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It says, with many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 42, the Bible says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer, amen. What do we see here? People have been saved. 
they have received salvation, they've been baptized. And now the very first thing that we are told that they do is that they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching. There were many other things that came after, but priority to them was to devote themselves to the apostles' teaching because it needs laid their growth, their maturity, their building up. It was priority, amen. So when you think about the role of teaching and improving your understanding, I want us to, first of all, understand that it is priority to submit ourselves to teachings, amen, so that we can grow. Because what will teachings do? Teachings will tell you the how. Preachings will tell you the end results, but teachings will give you the step by step. Look at how we labor through many scriptures, five different scriptures, just to explain one point. Do we see the difference? But if you're receiving a teaching, a preaching, it should have been over by now. Over, I mean, really over. Because the goal is to just highlight and then take you to the end. But a teacher needs to be patient to walk you through step by step. Yes, the Lord says that salvation is for me. But what is salvation? In a, an evangelist will lead you to Christ, you receive salvation. A, 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 a preacher or, or, come and, or, or a pastor will come and preach to you about the benefits, you know, how this package is so full, you can benefit from it. The question is how? Then a teacher comes in to show you how. And that's why you labor through many scriptures just to understand how. We have the promises all listed here in the word of God for you and I, but some of us have never benefited from those promises because we don't know how to. The how of a thing is very important to us. It is even most important to the Father that we know how, amen. So these people devoted themselves first to the apostles' teachings because they needed it. They knew that it was very important, important in, their, in improving their understanding. Now, what is another um, significance of the role of teaching? We see it in Psalm 119, verse 130. The Bible says, the teaching of your word gives light, so even the simple can understand. Teaching gives light. Teaching of God's word will unveil light to us and to the place where the simplest amongst us will understand. Sometimes you attend services and people just use some terminologies, the justification of the blood, you know, the, the, the redemption of the blood and the omniscience and omnipresence, all those vocabularies. Now, a new believer will hear it and know that it is spiritual, but what does it mean? It is not in the preaching that you hear all the breakdown of all those things. It is when you sit down under the tutelage of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they start breaking it down for you. Or you sit down under the uh, tutelage of a teacher or disciples, and they break it down to you. Then you'll be like, oh, so this is what they meant. You know, this is exactly what they meant. To talk about the remission of sins, all those words sound good, but what does it mean to you? but the teaching of the word of God unveils light so that the simplest in the crowd understands. It doesn't benefit us when we come and proclaim the good news and no one understands. And when you don't understand, do not blame it all on the person delivering the word. Go and do due diligence to find out exactly what they are saying. Because when we don't understand, we don't benefit from it. Amen, we don't, because we don't even know what's happening. Second Timothy 4, 2 to 3, still talking about the significance of the role of teaching. The Bible says, preach the word of God, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good te teaching. Patiently. It takes a lot of patience, beloved, to be a teacher of the word of God. Amen. It takes a lot of patience because your goal is not just to come and dispense knowledge. It's so that the people, after having listened to you, understand. You're trying to improve understanding for people. So you have to be very patient, very patient. Amen. If one series takes you 
five weeks, six weeks, for as long as you have the time, patiently walk the people through. Amen. So that at the end, they must have been built up and they have matured in the process. It says, patiently, Paul writing to his son Timothy, he said, patiently correct, patiently rebuke, and patiently encourage your people with good teaching because there is bad teaching. It says, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Let's pause. Sound and wholesome teaching. That is why at the beginning we pray that we can all come to the full knowledge of God. Amen. Because people are looking for the bare minimum to get away. The beloved, there are bare minimum results too. When you get the bare minimum, your results will show that you got bare minimum. Amen. Because your results will be bare minimum results as well. So do not be the type who falls in the category of not wanting to receive sound and wholesome, complete teaching. It is important that you endure to receive the full counsel of God. Very important that we do so. It says this kind of people, they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. The kind of teachers who will tell you that in the kingdom you don't sacrifice. Beloved, if you ever hear that, pick up your bag and run for your dear life. Amen? Because this is one kingdom that sacrifice is the foundation. So you will have to sacrifice. Christ set the pace. That's a difficult message to hear, but I fear, I do not fear um, bringing that kind of word to us. Jesus Christ paid the price. He set the pace. He is our example. We want to be like Jesus Christ. We will do what he did. Amen. We wouldn't die for anyone, but there are, in this walk, we will sacrifice. We will pay the price in different ways because the grace is sufficient for us. Amen. So do not look for people who will tell you what you want to hear. Look for people who will tell you what the word of God has to say. Amen. Because we do not have rights to this. God has. So we just take it directly from his mouth to the hearts of the people. Amen. We are identifying the importance of the role of teaching. We said that it is priority and it unveils light. And now we are saying that it, it requires a lot of patience to dispense this word. And it is for the purpose of correcting, rebuking, and encouraging people. Amen. Correction, rebuke, and encouragement. Amen. Now, the third way to improve understanding is to have an in-depth or to do an in-depth study of the Holy Spirit. By the grace of God, we'll embark on this journey next year to do an in-depth study of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because it is through the Holy Spirit that our understanding improves as well, like we saw at the beginning. But if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is and how to incorporate him into your daily life, it becomes difficult. Life just becomes challenging. Understanding the word is, just becomes too difficult. Amen. But in this dispensation in which you and I live, the Holy Spirit is whom God the Father and God the Son has made available to us to teach us. And the Bible says in John 14, 26, that, but the helper, referring to the Holy Spirit, the helper, also known as comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby. All of this is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you what? All things. And he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Amen. This was Jesus Christ then speaking to his disciples. Amen. If I were to read this now, I'll say, let's begin from here. The Holy Spirit whom the Father has sent in the name of Jesus Christ will teach you all things and will help you remember everything that Jesus Christ has told you. Amen. So his role is present and it is active. When Jesus Christ spoke then to his disciples, he said, because at that time, the Holy Spirit had not yet come. So he said, whom the Father will send, but whom the Father has sent because the Holy Spirit is here and now. Amen. 
So when you do an in-depth study of the Holy Spirit, you get to understand his role, you get to know how to incorporate him into your daily life, and you get to seek his counsel and he will teach you. Let's keep him busy because he truly wants to work. Amen. Now, another way to improve understanding, point number four, is prayer, through prayer. We began today by, after partaking of the Lord's Supper, we prayed, and Ephesians 1 was one of the uh, scriptures that we used to pray. Never stop praying for wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. It should be amongst the many things we pray about, it should be part of that list of things that we so desperately desire to have. And, and, and operate in. Paul praying for uh, the people in Ephesus said this, he says prayer for spiritual wisdom. He says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul said he heard about their faith in Jesus Christ and how much they loved one another. And because of that, he, he prayed a prayer of thanksgiving to God, making mention of them in his prayers. And this is what he said in his prayer, that the God of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You know, I smile here because Paul has heard about the faith of people. He has heard about how much they love each other. Yet, this is a prayer that he prays. If it were you and I, what would we be praying about? We'd be like, thank you, Lord, that they love each other. Thank you because their faith has grown. In Jesus' name, amen. And the case is closed. But Paul went further to teach us that when you hear that people are growing in their faith in the Lord and they have love for one another, pray for them in this regard. Ask for the spirit of wisdom to rest upon them or within them and revelation in the knowledge of God and that the eyes of their understanding may be enlightened. Because that is the only way to increase in faith. Having faith is one thing, but when we evaluate your kind of faith, what kind of faith do, we, do you and I have? Is our faith strong or is it weak? I'm not very impressed when I hear that you have faith. I want to see the type of faith, the quality of your faith. Amen. So Paul understood this mystery. So he said, you know what? I like this idea, but you know what? Let's, let me pray and ask God for something which I believe the need to help them take them to the next level. So if your understanding must improve, like Paul, you want to pray for other people. Of course, you want to pray for yourself. That the eyes of your understanding should be enlightened for the glory of the Lord. Amen. It's a prayer that we should never stop praying, irrespective of how mature we perceive that a person is in the kingdom. This is one prayer that can never get out of season. It will always be relevant in the work of a child of God. Amen. Now, the, the last point, um, or maybe not, but um, that talks about ways to improve our understanding will be a lifestyle of worship, a lifestyle of reverence. Amen. A lifestyle of worship a lifestyle of reverence. If you and I do not live a lifestyle of worship or reverence to the Lord, amen, it becomes very difficult to improve in your understanding. If we show absolute disrespect for the things of God, absolute disrespect for the presence of God and the word of God, and uh, we think we can just get by with Sunday services and Tuesday nights and some Wednesday nights, Beloved, it will be evident. I keep saying this thing and it is very true, amen? I keep saying it because I don't want us to forget. When we play games, you're not playing games with the people, who, with your leaders, it is with yourself, amen? You're not hurting anybody. As a matter of fact, with the leaders, God is helping them, downloading in them and they have something to bring. When you don't receive it, the future awaits you. Amen. The future awaits you. Now, the lifestyle of worship and reverence 
is very important if we must improve understanding. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, we see a scenario there. The Bible says, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. We're talking about improving understanding. We will not improve understanding if we show absolute dishonor towards um, the word of God. If we all towards the pursuit of understanding altogether. Here the, 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 the writer is saying that we need to apply our hearts to understanding. We need to cry aloud for understanding. How do you cry aloud for understanding? It's very easy. Just pick up your cell phone, call somebody. You know what? I have read this scripture. I just don't understand. Can you help me? That's crying aloud for understanding. We can cry aloud for understanding by our actions. You go on Google, the Bible talks about salvation. What is salvation? Jesus Christ is my Lord. What does it mean to be Lord? You Google, you look for preachers, people who have spoken about this. Your actions are crying out, crying aloud for understanding. Do not be the kind of Christian or child or disciple of Christ whereby you read something you don't understand, you just close the Bible and keep it. You say, oh, I'll wait for the pastor to explain that on Sunday. If they even get to it. Amen. No question. You cry out for understanding. You cry aloud for understanding with your actions and with your voice. People should know that you're desperate about knowing God at all costs. It shouldn't be a thing for, a secret, for the secret place. It should be evident every day that I reverence God and I, I demonstrate it through my pursuit for understanding. He says, and if you look for it as, as for silver, beloved, do you know how diligent we are in looking for money, finances, cash, silver? Yes. If we will be diligent about finding understanding like we are about getting the silver, the cash, the finance to pay our bills, it will be another story. You look at your life and you will marvel, amen. You will marvel at how much the Lord will download into you. It says, if you will, amen, if you will, if you look for it as for silver, amen. It did not even say that you should look for it as silver. It's a suggestion. And beloved, I always tell people, if the Bible suggests, I follow it. I don't need it to be an instruction. If you just suggest through scriptures, I just obey. It says, if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, do you have a gold jewelry or a very precious diamond? For most women, your wedding rings, how expensive and how much your husband's invested in it. Has it ever gotten lost? Think about how you searched for that, that ring day and night, sleepless nights. Just think about it. Do you do so for the word of God? Do you have sleepless nights because of the word? Do you have sleepless nights because you did not understand a scripture in your life? You know what? I'm not going to bed tonight. You keep searching. Like the, 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 the woman who lost her coin, she kept sweeping to find out where is this coin? How, how, how diligently do we sweep the word of God to find that which is, seems to be hidden, that treasure that seems to be hidden? And he says, when you do so, then you will. Beloved, never read verse 5 without reading verse 1 through 4. You will not get the point. Verse 5 is only as relevant as verse 1 through verse 4. He says, when you have done all of this, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Could that be why some of us do not understand the fear of the Lord? We think serving God is a child's play. We think we are doing other people a favor when we serve the Lord or when we fear God. We just want to display certain personalities when we see people we haven't got an understanding and it will be evident one day. Amen. Until we do this, then are we going to understand the fear of the Lord? It is no child's play. The kingdom of God is not a, a playground. It's not a dress rehearsal. Amen. It's serious kingdom business. And until we get to a, play where, to a place where we are desperate, for understanding and for wisdom. 
and for crying aloud for it uh, and applying our hearts towards it, then we get to that place where we truly fear the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. 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 Still talking about a lifestyle of worship and reverence. Beloved, worship is a lifestyle. By God's grace, before the end of this year, we'll talk about worship and praise most specifically. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not necessarily just singing. Worship is not limited to singing. It is part of what you do when you worship. When you talk, you're worshiping God. How you look is worship unto God. Amen. So that's why we talk about lifestyle of worship and reverence. How you treat people is worship. Amen. What you think about people is worship. Your attitude towards God is worship. So the Bible says here in Proverbs 25 verse 2, we're talking about ways to improve understanding. And we say a lifestyle of worship and reverence is relevant. And we looked at Proverbs already. Now uh, Proverbs um, chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Now we're looking at Proverbs 25 verse 2. It says, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. There is a place known as the hiding place of God's glory. Amen. And until we show absolute respect for it, we will always be um, limited in understanding. Beloved, you can wear understanding like a garment. You can wear it. And when you wear it, it will be evidence that you have it. Amen. But we will not continue to despise the hiding place of God and think we will just pick it up uh, um, by the roadside. Amen. God can so dress you up with a spirit of understanding to a place that even you will be so overwhelmed by the goodness of God. We want to wear all the designers. We walk, we search for that silver like no man's business to get those designers and wear them. How much understanding has those designers given you so far when it comes to the things of God? I even want to submit to you that it is better to start wearing spiritual garments than this physical, let the physical ones come later or the high end physical ones come later. May it be a better reflection of what you already know spiritually. We wear all the Gucci's and you name it, you know, I mean, we have enlightened people on the line, you know these things. We drive all the wonderful cars but that which is hidden in the hiding place of his glory, we haven't first, we haven't taken time to search them out and wear them as garments and display the splendor and the beauty of God, the excellence of God. Yet we want to, we want to display the excellence of designers. Let's examine our lives. Now, this is the last point. <laughs> Living a joy-filled life. Amen. Living a joy-filled life will help us improve our understanding. Living a joy-filled life. When a person is um, sorrowful, when you're down, it's difficult to benefit from the revelation of God. Because what is happening there is that you've been surrounded and enveloped by darkness. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to be perpetually sad because in the sadness, we wouldn't have the grace to even the energy to pray or the desire, I would say, to pray or to praise. Amen. However, that is the time when we should be praising even more to dispel the darkness and, you know, all the sadness that the enemy has just placed upon us. That's the time to rejoice or to play the praise songs such that it takes us out of sadness to a place of joy. Amen. But until we get there, if we keep living in sadness, we will not enjoy the, the light of God. That's the reason why we have demons of depression, so that we just remain enveloped in that cloud of darkness, so that light has no way to penetrate into us and dispel the darkness. Amen. The devil is very strategic. Amen. He, he, then he makes us prescribe all the medications you know how, except the word of God. But I submit to us that the first medication for depression is the word of God. Amen. 
It is the word of God. Amen. We are not Amen. despising the doctors. God has given them wisdom. But while they prescribed all the zoophants and for vomiting and all of those things, for whatever sickness, they should be prescribing the word of God as one of the sickness, as one of the treatments to health conditions. Amen. Because it Amen. is in the word of God that we find true healing. For Jesus Christ is the balm of Gilead and he is the balm in Gilead. Amen. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 12 verse 3, um, I'm going to read this from three translations, the Passion Translation, um, the New International Version, and, and the Dwey Rhymes. The Bible says, with triumphant joy, you will drink deeply from the wells of salvation. With triumphant joy, not just some lousy joy, triumphant joy. Beloved, joy is a kingdom weapon. It's a weapon in the kingdom. Because it says, with this joy, you will drink deeply from the wells of salvation. Now, to really understand this scripture, look at salvation as a gift package. Or look at it like a well. In the well, you have water. Or in a gift box, you have gifts in them. In order for you to have access into that well to, to carry maybe a bucket or two of water or into that box to remove the gifts and appreciate what the giver has given you, you need some kind of energy to do so. But do you realize that lack of joy drains the energy, it drains the passion, it drains the desire? That is the reason why when people suffer from certain um, health or mental um, health conditions, they have zero energy to do anything. And one of the targets of the enemy is Isaiah 12, 33, Isaiah 12, verse 3, because he knows that if you have joy, you will drink deeply from that package or that well of salvation. That if you have that joy, you will. But void of that joy, you will appreciate the box all you can and never benefit from it. You will sit by the well all you can and all you can and die of thirst. And that's the enemy's desire for you and I. But the that's devil true. is a liar. We will rejoice and our joy will be triumphant for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Everything Amen. the enemy does is to attack our joy because he knows what joy will bring to us, that we will drink from the wells of salvation. NIV says, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Beloved, we need energy to draw from the wells of salvation. It takes energy, beloved, to search scriptures, a lot of it. And a sad person will not even be enthusiastic about that journey altogether. Amen. Then with joy, you do exploits. Dwey Rhymes says, you shall draw waters with joy out of the Savior's fountains. I decree and I declare that the place of sadness is not your portion. Amen. And the place of triumphant joy is your portion and my portion for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beloved, the floor is open for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for this word. This just um it 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 hit like at the, the door of my heart. It hit so personally tonight uh, because uh just kind of getting a little bit a little personal, I guess, earlier today because I had so many days off from work from my being sick. Today, I had to go take something into work. Before I left and I was looking around like, oh, do I have, is there anything else I need to, you know, am I missing anything? When I looked on my desk, just making sure I wasn't leaving anything, my communion cup stuck out like a sore thumb. I mean, it was like big red, 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 just, huge. I knew God was pointing it out to me, take communion. And I must be honest, I hadn't taken it in a couple days. Um, so I went and I, I, I began to take communion. And then I heard in my spirit, go take communion with your son. When I went to go take with him before I left, I said, go ahead, babe, you leave, you lead communion. And he was, he was 
playing a game or something. So he began to start community. He just started rumbling through it quick, 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 trying to just get through it. And I said, you know, I, I, I said, amen. I said, but hey, you know, let me, let me remind you how important it is. And I went into, um, it's like, I wanted to just tell him that it's important, but, but the spirit of God led me into this deep teaching, into scripture, into even the scripture of taking communion in an unworthy manner, into, I mean, just all of these things teaching. And I remember in my head going into my mind saying, God, this could have taken 30 seconds and I'm here 10 minutes later standing up teaching this guy like where why like and I said it in my head to the next thing as I'm speaking to him and I'm telling him all this stuff literally I'm saying to him out loud I said do you see how this could have been 30 seconds or one minute and now here I am I said but Ty because instead of me just telling you this I said I want you to have understanding because I said the same way that we we used to go to church and we just sit and we we, we, we listened to the word for a second. I said, I see the difference in being discipled and taught. It's a difference now. There's a total difference in the way that I operate because I have understanding now because I can call myself a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not just I, I hear the word and I go about doing what I do. It's I hear the word. I apply it to my life. I am a follower of Christ. I'm a disciple of Christ and I have understanding. So when I see these things taking place normally in my life where before at one point in time, it'd be like, okay, you just say what you say, you know what you you say what you maybe you read from scripture and that's it you keep it moving but you want people to understand and I left him off saying I know right now it might seem like you know it's a lot it might seem like a lot I said but mark my words you will take exactly these things and you will teach someone else down your line you will recognize it and you will teach them so as this stuff started just kind of coming up so perfectly it's so amazing how you know we're in the Bible Body of Christ. So we are, we should be in tune with each other. We should be in one place so much so that yes, when he came in here, I said, look, look, look what they're teaching on baby. <laughs> Listen on teaching. He came in right then in there. I said, isn't this coming into total agreement with what we're speaking on? earlier you know and I still get that kind of joy I still I want to remain that way because I, I realize sometimes as we mature in Christ as we get older um 20 30 years down the line I recognize um my older believers where it's like I'm still like I guess fairly new so I'm still like oh my gosh look God look he he heard what I was talking about look he brought it into and I'm still like joy and everybody else is like yeah yeah that's what God does <laughs> you know, we're in the same body and there's, you know, and I still just get this joy. And I just want to say, I never want to lose this joy because when you realize like you're on the same page as God, you, you're, you're, you're really walking with him that it always comes together. I mean, it's, it's inexplainable. It, mm -hmm. it is such a joy that you cannot even explain. So when I heard you start to speak on this and teach on this and the understanding, even though I know it's a continuation of last week, um, just to know that it was, I was in tune, just mm -hmm. to know that I was in tune with it. I'm so grateful. All glory to God. And thank you for always being in tune, Minister Mildred. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Next person. <laughs> I just have a question. Like, oh, hold on for a second. I just have a question. Okay, so my, so my, so my son, he is nineteen years old. You know, and I, he doesn't believe there's any ruler or anything. I'm just trying to like figure out like what kind of way what way should I approach him because I've been trying to do this for years and literally like like for years to try to get get him a foundation in Christ but it just doesn't he just I just can't get through to him because his mother doesn't doesn't believe in Christ. How old did you say your son is? He is 19 now. 19? Yes ma'am. 19 okay. So I'm going to direct you to Pastor Jones to help with that. So after okay. seven, you call him, call her, 
Pastor Jones and Dr. Jones to help you. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. Amen. 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 So any other thoughts? Yeah, I can go um, and next, you know, thank you so much, um, Mama Mildred, again, for the, for the, for continuing to teach us about, you know, wisdom and understanding. Um, and uh, as you were teaching, uh, it, it reminded me, it, this was just really uh, uh, towards the end of the work day, maybe around, you know, five o'clock. And I've had a good day so far. And this email came, which just kind of really <laughs> turned me <laughs> down. And uh, I just had to remind myself that before I respond to that email, that I, I need to pray for wisdom and understanding and kind of really understanding where that message was coming from, that person, before I can you know, respond to that message and uh, to just, again, uh, turn to God asking, uh, because as you said, you know, you, you're not gonna, sometimes we can be dependent to another human being, our teachers and think, oh, maybe I'm gonna need to talk to this person to figure out how I can respond and forget that, you know, you have God right there, you know, as your teacher, you know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, so that you can ask uh, for um, to teach you and to give you wisdom and understanding um, in everything in every situation. So uh, I decided not to respond to that email. I just went and made dinner <laughs> and started making dinner. I said, you know, I will come back to that, you know, after. And I haven't gone back to that. But, you know, I think by the time I go back to that, I will have more, um, again, wisdom and understanding in terms of how I respond. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Start typing and responding in a, you know, in a maybe defensive way because you felt like the email was attacking, you know, the person was attacking you. Right. Amen. The Lord is going to give you wisdom on how to respond. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much, Mama Mildred, for tonight's teaching. Uh, my takeaway, just really to piggyback off Sister Dima, what really stuck out to me is, um, you know, when you highlighted that uh, in, in the body of Christ, some are born with the gift, right? Mm -hmm. Some have the gift of teaching, meaning it just flows differently. Yeah. Everyone can teach. However, some do have the gift of teaching. So we should not be hindered if teaching isn't a gift. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, we, it, we really just need to come before God um, and just be honest, transparent, understanding that he can really guide us through the whole process Amen. I haven't been gifted in this area. However, because of his grace, um, I'm able to do abundantly above, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. It's just really that honesty, transparency, and just saying, you know, Holy Spirit, just help me. I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I trust that because of your power in me, when I speak, even the cows can understand. Amen. And amen. Um, amen. So that that really stuck out to me because for years I was just really crippled by by maybe lack of communication skills, accent this, people can't hear that. But what I mean, what what is it that God can't do? Amen. Amen. Um, just be willing position yourself really humble yourself and he just shines through in in every situation and 
And, and I'm just feeling really confident with this teaching tonight that I can be a teacher by the grace of God. So, so thank you for that. Thank you. Amen. 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 Yeah. So <laughs> that's really powerful. And I believe that particular comment has encouraged many people on the line and those who will listen. You know, most of the jobs that we do, we are not gifted at those jobs. We're just skillful at them. And we only learn those skills when we receive the, res um, the job description or when we are hired, certain skills are being developed on the job and we develop those skills, amen. amen. Now, it is not our gift, it's a skill. So look at that um, analogy in light of the word of God as well. You may not be gifted, but you can develop skill. Amen. I, I bet you that not every teacher that teaches is a gifted teacher. When you go to school, you learn the process, you just come and implement it. And we Amen. thank God for the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. So the world has shown us a way and they learned it from the kingdom. So we're going to overtake them with the same things that they learned from us. God is a giver of skills. We will use those skills for his glory. We will use the gifts too. And Amen. Amen. Jesus Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts? Sister Miranda, any thoughts? Brother Allen and why? Brother Kingsley and why? Sister Erica? Mr. Coco and son, Benas Pan family. Hi everyone. Um, I wasn't able to really keep up like I usually am on Tuesday and Wednesday nights, but I do because I'm working, you know. But I do plan to go back and watch this over. And I did hear something about um depression and how the enemy will use depression to keep us to keep the light from coming in. So I definitely want to go back and expound on that point right there. But you guys have a great night. <laughs> and you too. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Hi, Sister Mary. Hi, um, also good evening. Good evening, everyone. And actually, thank you so much for the the end of this teaching on understanding and the knowledge, the wisdom, everything. And uh, I just want to really abide with you that it depends, it's, a, it, it's like, it's a willing heart, as you rightly put it, that most often when we go to a job, like me, at times I've applied for so many jobs that I don't even know. By the end, I go, they train me, I'm so good in that job. So <laughs> it's the same thing, Joe. So when you were like, when you were talking tonight, it was really like, it was really hitting on me because, um, everything is just like if you really if if you are willing if you are really you you make up your mind that as you rightly put it like somebody that wants to go and look for a goal some of them they even died on the way <laughs> they the goal. it's the same thing with like you told it we we're talking about the reverence you know all those things I, I was just thinking but is it ignorant or is it just that you know because I I, I give much time to like the, the work, everything, even extra hours I take. But when it comes to the things of God, I just want to hurry. As that sister, she was saying that at times I do communion also very fast, 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 hurry. But it, I don't think that's, it, you're not reverent, you're, you're not like reverencing God. You're not fearing God when you are doing it in that manner, you know, but all those things, you know, with so much, when you listen to me, so much guilt. <laughs> blame myself i don't even blame the word of god it's me it's me i do really blame myself so it's just a matter of really like have to reflect and really take a decision on it so um i just want to really say thank you and as you really put it looking at it the five four ministry yeah i know um they said um, all of us have been given like uh, to be, become a disciple. Everyone is there in the Bible. But we, we can do the five for the, the discipleship thing, even if we have not we are not being called like the teacher, the prophet, whatever. But the discipleship thing, it's open, it's free, it's 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 there. 
So um, I think um, it's just to, sit, to really sit up and then with the help of the Holy Spirit and really make up my mind to, yeah, <laughs> to embark on the, on, on the journey. But it's a journey, it's a process. <laughs> Amen. So thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> we take one more comment and then we'll get into prayer if there is any. Uh, uh, good evening. Good evening. Mm. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to um, uh, um, uh, to come back a little bit on uh, uh, Sister Tristan, uh, comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a great comment, and uh, I don't know if I didn't hear you well. Uh, at the end, you 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 said that uh, you are not a great teacher, something like that. That's what she said. Is that, is that a <laughs> question for me? Hmm? Yes, there's a question. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for asking. Please, thank you, Brother Allen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, okay. The, the, the reason why, because when you say that, um, it kind of uh, hit my spirit a little bit. And uh, uh, sometimes it's difficult for us to know who we are, you know, is uh, um, mostly. Other people who can say, you know what, um, uh, you are gifted in this, you are gifted in that, you are gifted in that, you have um, this potential, this potential, this, this potential. That's true, real true, because um, uh, a few years ago, many people came, told me that. Uh, I'm gifted to um, leading people. Say what? What? Many people, different people, leading, leading, leading. Say what? What? I, I I don't recognize myself on that. I don't recognize myself on that. Um, just to say what? Just to say that. Um, um, uh, um, uh, you are gifted. You are gifted on teaching. You can be surprised. You can be surprised um, uh, later, maybe in the near future, but I'm telling you, you are gifted. Amen. So don't uh, underestimate yourself and just work on it. Just work on it and you will see you are gifted. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank um, you I for adding your okay. voice to us. We have thought, uh, brother, thank you for adding your voice. To I concur. Together. Exactly. Amen. I love to hear Sister Christine, yeah. whether she's teaching or she asks questions, her questions are always lined up just right. And even when she speaks, uh, when she teaches. So um, again, even what was said before with the skills that we learn on the job, Yes. You know, a lot of times you can go to college and you can get a degree yes. in whatever it is that you went to college for, but that does not make you skillful in that yet. You're not, you're not um, gifted in that area yet, or the gift haven't been manifested yet. So yes. now you're on the job and you're practicing, you're doing it every day and you're, you're being exposed to that particular thing more and more. And the more you are exposed and the more you do it, the more it comes out. And then people will see like, wow, this person was actually born for this, you know? <laughs> yes. yeah. and, and that's when you know your skills. Besides that, sometimes when you are, are um, when you're coming up as a youngster, you know, you can actually um, know what it is that God called you to, or even if you didn't know it was God, just know what it is that you want to do. You want to be a pilot? And you've been saying that since you was six years old. And when you get to an adult, that's what it is. That's the gift that was given to you. And it won't go away. No matter what kind of job you take, you're going to end up somehow in that place. So it's just a matter of us allowing ourselves to be exposed to what it is that 
we um we are called to it could be a desire we have not knowing that that's a call but once you get in there and you begin to work at it you will see that that's what it is and and you will enjoy doing it it will be a pleasure for you to do that because it's something that was already the seed that was planted in that gift was there so i i concur about sister um christine most definitely Amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank amen. you for that wonderful contribution. And by the way, she's teaching tomorrow, so let's show up on time. Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Glory yeah. to God. We thank God. We, we, we really appreciate that. And that's why Wednesdays are very critical for us, because it's an opportunity for us to discover ourselves. Come on now. The training ground. Amen, amen, amen. Make sure that everybody gets a chance. Everybody gets a chance. Your turn is coming if it hasn't already come. Amen. amen. And, amen. and you know, um, amen. you know why I also um agree with you as well concerning on Wednesdays. Um I I used to be so shy, I like seriously shy. If I knew that I was going to stand before people, I was literally ready to go use the bathroom by myself. That's how shy I was. I was so nervous. But um, as time goes by, even now, you know, even now, I don't get, I'm not fearful by any means. However, you know, I don't take it lightly what I'm called to do. So, you know, there's no boasting or bragging about anything. It's just that I get to a place where I understand how God move with me and just to allow him to do what he's going to do. So Wednesdays is a practice night. It is a night of teaching and exposing. It's a night when you get to have your voice and, and you get to bring a word to help to strengthen each other. And a night when God is going to use you to shine, you know? And so you, you know, we should all turn out. We should all look forward to it because we are, we're saying that we are disciples and disciples don't keep quiet. Man, disciples man. don't stay still and sit in a house and don't uh, disciples goes out and they talk. You see one thing I can um, respect a sister Erica for that girl would talk to a rock. I'm serious. <laughs> She will roll up and she will tell you about Christ and she will tell you how good he is and all this other stuff. And I love her for that because she, you know, yes. she doesn't keep quiet and there is no way, no way you can say that you're a disciple and you're not speaking or sharing or, or, you know, talking to somebody. So Man. this, this Wednesday night is a night of experience, a night of exposure, a night of us coming together in the unity of the faith. I love it. I absolutely love it. And when we keep doing that, we will see how God move where we start beginning to preach or somebody in the ministry will say, you know what? I believe God is calling me to establish a ministry of whether it's one for women, children, dogs, cats, I don't know, whatever it is, but you'll do it because you have been exposed Amen. and manifested. Amen. 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 Thank God for Amen. this season of opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. <laughs> Amen. 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 So real quickly, we'll pray and we'll be done for the night. Then we'll receive our assignments for next week. So prayer points, two prayer points, three verses. Psalm 86, verse 11. The Bible says, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Psalms 25, 4 to 5, show me your ways, Lord, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my, you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. <laughs> Those are our prayer points tonight. I mean, it doesn't need any further explanation. Just reading it out is a prayer to the Lord. But Amen. I want us to, to just give our attention to it in two minutes and just cry out to the Lord. He is our teacher. Ask him to teach you his ways. Amen. He Amen. showed 
Moses, Moses his ways, but the children of Israel is this. Amen. We want to know the ways of God, not only his actions. All around us, we see his goodness, but how did it come about? Is what we want to know. Let's just pray. Just read it out to the Lord and just emphasize on it in your own words. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Father, Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just come before you right now. We give you praise, glory. The we ask you, Father God, to teach us your ways, Father, that we may rely on your faithfulness. Give us, Lord God, undivided heart, that we may fear your name. Glory to your name, Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we bless you as you show us your way, Lord. You will teach us the right path in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That you, Father God, will guide us in the right way and into truth. And you will teach us. For you are our God and our Savior. Glory to your name, Jesus. And we hope in you, Lord God. All the days of our lives, we will do so. And we bless your holy name, O oh God. As we submit ourselves to you, we thank you, Lord. That we hear your voice, Holy Spirit, your teaching and your leading in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And, oh God, that wisdom would overtake us in the name of Jesus Christ. Understanding will, will chase us down, oh God. And we give you praise as we open up our mouth. Oh God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did we all pray? Amen. 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 So, beloved, before we conclude tonight, I would like Pastor Jones to pray for us when we are done, um, to pray and close, round up, and uh, also to lead us in the um, grace. But here is our assignment for next week, because next week we continue with part four. Amen. But this is how we are going to do it. I'm not going to be the teacher. We will all teach somehow. Now, we want to do demonstration lessons. We have learned the mystery of understanding. So now let's demonstrate it um, in our midst. Amen. Now, the assignment is each and every one of us should study the temptations of Jesus Christ with understanding. Just don't read it like you used to read it before. Allow the Lord to teach you. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Write them out. Bring it to us next week. Let's share our thoughts. That will be our demonstration lesson. So come ready to share your findings. Amen. Now, you will not be doing yourself a favor if you go online and just copy people's revelations. It is to your disadvantage. So allow them, allow this, all the teachers you've heard to teach you then bring your findings and let's share them. Amen. That will be our Amen. answer for next week as a way of demonstrating what we have learned so far. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Pastor, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you and praise you. We bless your holy name, O oh God. We thank you for tonight's lesson, O oh Father. We just give you praise and glory and honor that you always show up and show out in the midst of us. We thank you, Father God, for the understanding that you're given unto us. We thank you, Lord God, because you're our God. You are our Lord and our Savior. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our teacher, our leader, our guide. And we thank you that you're guiding us in a place, a right place. You're guiding us in truth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, God, that you're allowing wisdom and understanding to overtake us. And so, Father, we just give you praise as we submit ourselves to you. Lord God, help us to let our lifestyle become a worship. Let us live in you, oh, God. Let us move and have our being in you. You are our God in the name of Jesus Christ. And without you, we are nothing. We thank you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah El. Elion, the God Almighty. You're the God that knows all things concerning us. You know what we have need of, and you know the hour and the season. And we bless your holy name tonight, oh God, because you have set, even set aside a day that we can come together to share one to another in the name of Jesus Christ, that you're able to manifest your will for our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, that you will give us the right words that we will speak and share, that we be able to teach, oh God, we'll be able to instruct and we'll be able to walk in our gifting. And so Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We bless you tonight for the teacher. We thank you, Lord God, that you will continue to pour out your spirit upon her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will continue to 
to use our tongue as your ready writer. You continue to open up our wisdom and our understanding in the name of Jesus. And Father, as she shared with us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we receive it gladly. We will not hold it, but we will let it become, take root and germinate and bring forth much fruit in Jesus' name. So Father, for this, we are grateful on tonight. We bless you and we praise you for all the lessons that you have given us thus far and what you already have in store for us. We thank you for even the assignment, oh God, that we will come, come ready with joy to be able to share one to another. And so God, we give you praise. We bless your holy name as we leave this place, but not from your presence. We ask you to cover each and every one of our homes in the name of Jesus Christ with the blood of Jesus. Allow no weapon that is formed against us to be able to prosper in Jesus name. I thank you, Father, that in each and every person on the line right now, oh God, whatsoever they touch, we will prosper in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the wisdom and understanding that you're going to bestow upon them as upon us, oh God, as we go into studies for what it is that you have given unto us. And we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. And these things we ask not amiss, but according to your word in Jesus' name. And so we'll say the grace. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. May the grace of the our grace Lord of and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The love of God and the yes, sweet God, fellowship God, of, God, of the God, Holy God, Spirit God, rest, God. reign, rule, and abide both now and forever. And surely goodness and mercy God. shall follow us God. all the days of our God. lives. And we will God. dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, God. never and ever, God. and ever and ever. Amen. 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 Have, a, have a good night, Come everybody. somebody and tell them you love them. Oh, God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Love you too. We love you. Good night. Amen. Good night. Amen. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Amen. Good night. Good night. Sister Dez, I see you. And recording. Amen. Pastor Jones. Amen. Pastor Jones. Yes, Why you ain't call me back, Pastor Jones? Huh? Why you ain't call me back, Pastor Jones? When? I'll talk to you later. <laughs> love y'all. Good night. All right. Love you too. <laughs> okay. <laughs>